All right, good evening. I hope you're all well. Today we're learning Maseches, Bava Metziah, Dav Zayin, Amid Beis, and Dav Ches. We have a lot of ground to cover. We're starting at the third of the wide lines, about ten lines from the bottom of Zayin, Amid Aleph. Let's go. Tanu Rabbanan, Shnaim Adukim Bishtar. There are two people who are holding on to a document. Malve Omer Shali Hu Venofal Mimeni Umitzasi. The Malve, the lender, says it's really mine. It fell out of my possession. Thank you for finding it. I'm still able to use this to collect this. Valid document. Vilova Omar, the borrower, says, Shalchahu, I agree that it, that you're the one who originated the document. However, Uperasiv Lacha already paid you. So, what do we do in such a case where this document is found? And we don't have absolute clarity as to who it belongs to. So, according to Rebbe, Yiskaim Hashtar Bechosamam. As long as we can verify the document with the signatories on the document, then the Malva can use it to collect again. Rashbag Omer Yachaloku. Rashbag says, no, it's not about Kiyum Ashtar, but rather it's just 50 50. The Brisa continues, Nafaliyad Dayan, and we'll see what this means later, that if in fact the Dayan had his hands on it, Lo Yotziu Olamis, it will never leave his hands. Rabbi Yossi Omer Harayu Bechaz Kasr. Yossi says it has its initial Chazaka being of that of the Malve, and we'll learn what all these sheets mean. Let's analyze this Brisa of Shnaim Adukim Bishtar. The Gemara says, Omar Mar, we had said, Yiskaim Ashtar Bechosamav. Says the Gemara, Vigavi Le Malve Kule. I don't understand. All you have to do is verify that the document uh, was accurate based on the Edom, and then the Malve is able to collect everything. But less Le Mas Nisin, Shnaim Ochsin Batalas. Why are you saying, why, why would Rebbe say this opinion? Why would anybody say this opinion that as long as you can verify the authors of the, uh, as long as you can verify with witnesses that the document is valid, why would you say it goes to the Malve? It should be Shnai Mochsin Batalas and Yechloku. Amarava, six lines from the bottom. Amarava, Amarav Nachman, Bimakuya. We're talking about a case where we're able to verify the document, uh, where I should say, excuse me, where the document is already verified. So then, um, hakol yachloku. Even Rebbe would agree that it's Yachloku that we would split it. However, kipligi mekuyam. What, what they're arguing with is where we're not able to be Makayim the star. We cannot verify the document. Rebbe Savar Mode Bishtar Shekis Savo Tzarech Lekaimo. That even in the case scenario where the Love was Mode that the star existed, even so, even though the Love, and he would be the proof that it existed, he's admitting that the document was real, we have to be Makayim the star. And if he can verify it, then it's going to be public, then they'll split. And if not, then they won't split. My time, well, why would that be true? Because the document itself is just paper. After all, who is the person who made the star into anything worthwhile? It was the Lova when he said, yes, this is in fact yours. That's the Lova. But the same Lova who was Mekayim the star also said, Hakamar de Priya. He also said that he had paid already. So one way or the other, says the Gemara, one way or the other, the Lova is the one who is responsible for verifying the star, and therefore it's Chaspa Be'alma, because the only reason it's verified is because of the Lome, Lova. This is kind of like the uh, the line in the Gemara that says, Pesha Asar Pesha Hitir. Here it's just in the reverse, Pesha Hitir Pesha Asar, that really, that because the only reason that the document is valid is because the Lova admitted it, then when he also says that he paid, so then it's no more valid than it was before his first comment. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Savar Mode Bishtar Shek Savo in Tzach Lekaimo. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel was of the opinion that if uh, the Mode Bishtar Shek Savo, that if the Lova admits that the document was already written, Ein Tzach Lekaimo, Ve'afal Gav de Loma Kaim Le'ach Loku, that it should be split no matter what. That's the Shita of Rashbag. And Nafaliyad Dayan Lo Yotzi Olamis, what is that talking about when it says that it fell into the hands of the Dayan? As we turn to the top of Zion Amid Beis, the Gemara says, My Shna Liad Dayan. Who cares about whether or not it's a Dayan? Rashi says at the top of the page, Meish Acher. Who cares? Why are we talking about a Dayan? It doesn't matter who has it in their possession, if I'm fighting with you or if I'm fighting with the Dayan over the document. The halacha should be the same whether or not you're a Dayan or a Balabas. Top of Zion Amid Beis, top line, Amar Rav Achi Kamar Be'achar Shemotza Shtar Shenafa Liad Dayan. We're talking about a document that had fallen from the hand of a Dayan. Still, what is that talking about? What does that mean? Why is the Dayan special? I mean, I know why he's special, but why would he be different in regards to whether or not we'd split the document? Says the Gemara, We've had this uh, before in Shas. A henpik is basically like uh, a stamp of sorts that indicates that the 
document is verified. And then, lo yotziu olam is then, it can never be taken out of the hands of the Malba because there's no reason to assume that it's, uh, that it's not a valid star. It has the henpeck on it. That's what the Gemara says. We're on Zion and Midbase, four lines down. The Gemara says that with a henpeck, we know, lo yotziu olam is that with the shtemple of the Dayan, then it will never uh, be an invalid document. Without a henpick, we might definitely assume that just because it was written doesn't mean that the loan actually took place. That's why without a henpick, there's no question about it. Pasha, that that's not going to be on the Malve. Here, even if, and this is a, a, a unique shita, that even if it's true that there is a henpick on it, you still should not force the uh, lova to pay, the chayshin on the pira'on, because it's still possible that the person paid for it and then the document slipped away. That's why you should always mark your documents as paid. Uh, you don't want to be in this scenario, especially if you're the lova, if you're the borrower, you don't want to have to pay again. So that's what happened over here. There was a handpick which says that the document is mekuyam. However, chayshin on the pira'on. The Rabbi Yossi Omer, Rabbi Yossi disagrees. Rabbi Yossi says we are choshesh, uh, we are not choshesh lepiraon, and therefore we follow the chazaka. So really, the machlokas between the Tanakama and Rabbi Yossi is as follows: When we have a chazaka that the document belongs to the malve, how do we hold that up against the, the fact of chashin lepiraon? Tanakama, the rabbanon are choshesh lepiraon. Reb Yossi is not Choshesh the Piron. He's not Choshesh that the Love would have necessarily paid back already. Says the Gemara, wait one second. Zion Amid Bay, six, seven lines down, maybe eight lines down. The Lo Chayesh Reb Yossi the Piron. Reb Yossi, who in this Bryce had just said that he was not, that he was not Choshesh the Piron. How can you say that? The Atanya, we have a Bryce up. The Bryce reads, Matashtar Ksuba Bishuk. Let's say you have a document of a Ksuba that's found in the Shuk. When the husband agrees about the document, the document goes back to the wife and she can collect a ksuba from it. But if the husband does not agree to the divorce documents, neither of them are allowed to have the document. As long as they're still married, so then the din is that it goes back to the woman. If she was widowed or if she was divorced, lo yachzir lo lazev lo lazet, then it cannot go back to them at all. And this is the sheet of Rabbi Yossi, the second one that says lo yachzir lo lazev lo lazet. And the problem with this shita is that it's so sir the previous shita. In the previous brisa, he had said lo chayshin on the piraon. Here he says that the money can't go back, the ksuba can't go back to the isha because we are choshesh the piraon. Stira within. The Shita of Rabbi Yossi. So here we'll see three possible answers. Answer number one is Epoch. We should switch around the Shitas. How do we switch around the Shitas? We'll switch around the Shitas from the Brisa that we started at the bottom of Zion and Medalim. So before we said that Rabbi Yossi was of the opinion of Harev Bechaz Kaso and uh, that we were Lochai Shinon Le, uh, le Piraon. But here we're reversing the Shita. So that's a good answer. So Ihachi says the Gemara, that's a fine answer for Rabbi Yossi, but because the Brisa had the sheet of, of the Rabbanon over here and the Rabbanon over there, well, if you switch around the sheet of the Rabbanon, so then Kasha the Rabbanon, not the Rabbanon. Because now in the Brisa from the bottom of the page, now the Chachamim say Harev Bechaz Kaso, that the Malve gets to hold on to the item because the Chazaka is in, it, is in place, and therefore... Uh, we're not Choshesh the Piraon, but in the previous Brisa, they said the exact opposite. Says the Gemara, really, the Brisa about Shtar Ksuba that we saw just now on the page, which is 10 lines down, that Brisa is Kula Ribyosi. Really, the Brisa is a little bit different, and it's not what we thought. The Brisa about Shtar Ksuba that starts eight, nine lines down at the words Vihatanya about the Ksuba Shabashok. So that's all Rabbi Yossi. How should it read? Ein habal, we're one third of the way down on Zion Amid Beis. Ein habal modeh, if the husband doesn't admit to the fact that this ksuba belongs to the Isha, lo yachser lo lazeh lo lazeh, nobody gets it. When is this true? 
That is, shanis armala o shanis garsha, if there was a death, if the husband died, or if there was a divorce. Aval oda tachas baila, if in fact they were still married, so then, yachzer isha, then the, it does go back to the woman, and there should be, it should say over here, divi ribyosi. This is the sheet of Rabbi Yossi. She Rabbi Yossi Omer, Oda Tachas Baila Yachzer Leisha, Nisar Melo Nisgarsha, Lo Yachzer Lo Laze, Velo Laze. So it says the Gemara, this is a fuller brisa. It's all according to Rabbi Yossi. Sometimes Rabbi Yossi is Choshesh, and sometimes he is not. And that's why these brisas work out. That's answer number one in full. And here's answer number two. We had said to solve for the Rabiosi stira, we need to be apuch. We need to switch around the Rabiosi shita. Says the Gemara, Rav Papa Amar, halfway down, Amar, Laolam lo tepuch. Don't switch around the shitas of Rabiosi. Rabiosi, le divrem de Rabbonon Kamar lu. Rabiosi was not talking about his own shita. Rabiosi was saying, according to you, the Rabbonon, at least admit to me um, the following. And this now the Gemara goes through the whole swara. Says the Gemara. Lidi di, Rabbi Yossi says, according to me, myself, and I, afilunis armela onis garsha, that even if it were to have been that the husband died or that there was a divorce, lo chayshin and lipiron. According to Rabbi Yossi, he's not choshesh that the lova would have already paid because the lova would have been careful to not let the, the bill uh, just float around. When he makes the payment, he would have stamped it with the, the paid, the red paid ink. Would have been great. But Lididhu says Rabbiosi, according to you, O Duli Mias, you should at least admit to me, but O Datachas Bailad Yahzul Isha Dala Bas Pironi, that we should say that it's Yahzul Isha, because it's not like she would have paid it, it's like she would have been paid. So it's not exactly the same. Bamule Rabbanon, the rabbis say it's different with an Isha because what could have happened in the marriage is Amor Tsurare Atvisa, that she actually got her hands on cash of the husband. Let's say we're dealing with a, a husband who, again, we're dealing with a case scenario where a woman, things are very different now in most homes, where now most uh, women spend way more money than, than men uh, in most cases. And it's not always their money. It's money that's shared or it's money that's totally his. But she has a lot of freedom. Back in the day, things were very different, especially when a woman didn't bring something massive into the marriage. If the husband gave her petty cash to the tune of, let's say, the equivalent of Masai and Zeus, so then in theory, that money could then be for her. And that's why the rabbis are saying that we're Choshesh the Piron. Ravina gives the third answer, two thirds of the way down. Ravina, Kamaisa. We talk a do switch around the Brysas. We do switch around the name so that Rabbiosi is not Soser himself. And the time of the Rabbonon. Why is it that the rabbis are not so sir themselves? Because Acha, by the case of the get, Mishum de Chayshin and Lashtek Subos. Here we're dealing with a concern of Shtek Subos, namely, we have a concern that's very specific to the world of Ksuba that does not translate back over to the world that we've been discussing, and therefore no concern at all. That's how we end this conclusion. So there's a three way machlokas in the Gemara about how to navigate. The seeming steer between Rabbi Yossi about whether or not Chayshin and Lulove. Let's just do a brief summary and then we'll move on. We've been discussing what happens when we have Shnaim Aduko Spishtar. We have two people who are interested in a particular document. And in short, we have a machlokas whether or not we're concerned that the Love, the borrower, has paid back yes or no. Does the Chazaka of ownership of the Malve override the concern that maybe the Love paid back? That's our Machlokas, Rabbonon, and Rabiosi. That brings us to um, another discussion about uh, about a star, and that is as follows. And the Gemara says, about 15, 20 lines from the bottom of the page, in the middle of the line, Zion Amad Beis. Amar Abzeira Machlokas, doesn't actually mean Machlokas, that's what Rashi says over here, fascinating. Normally say, when we see this phrase, normally it's a qualification of a Machlokas. The Machlokas is only over here, Kipliki over here, but over there, really, that's the machlokas. Or over there, there's no machlokas. So here, the word machlokas, Rashi touches for us. Rashi is halfway down. Dibra maschal machlokas. Machlokas. Hayach loku de kama rashbag. Demash macholken bishave. Kach shamati mishum rabbi He says that machlokas just means our Mishnah about, um, about yachloku. That's really the machlokas. It's a strange word. Anyways, machlokas b'sheshnei madukim b'tofes b'sheshnei b'toref. For both of them are holding on to the tofes and the toref. 
The tofes and the toref are different parts of the star. The toref is the ikr part of the star, and the tofes is the non-ikr part of the star. So when both of them are holding on to both, so that is when we would say yachloku. Aval echad mehen, aval echad aduk betofes, vechad aduk betorev, so zen notel tofes, vezen notel notel torev. So then we'd have to say that if I'm holding on to the non-essential part of the star, and you're holding on to the essential part of the star, then each of us takes whatever we can get our hands on. That's the shita of Rebbe Lazar. Rebbe Yochanan Amar Le'olam Cholken. Rebbe Yochanan was of the opinion, no, even in a case where I'm holding on to the tofes, and you're holding on to the toref, Whereas Rabbi Lazar would say that whatever you're holding on to is what you keep, Rabbi Yochanan says it's Chalke no matter what. Asks the Gemara. Rabbi Yochanan, you're saying Chalke. Is that true? V'afilu echad aduk betofes v'echad aduk betorah. If I'm holding on to the non-essential part of the document and you're holding on to the essential part of the document, why would you say yachloku? After all, Tanya, what did we learn yesterday? Zen notel ad makom shiodom agas. Yesterday we saw that if I'm holding on to the talus, I'm holding on to 12 inches of the talus, you're holding on to 18. Okay, your possession is nine-tenths of the law. You own more than I do just because of what you were told. Is. So why would we say anything different over here? If I'm holding on to the tofes and you're holding on to the toref, I should get the tofes and you should get the toref. Why would Rav Yochanan say, Yachloku? So the Gemara says, Lo tzricha dekai toref beimitzi. Says the Gemara, what we're talking about is where the toref is in the middle. So the guy, was, one guy's grip was in the middle on the toref, and my grip was toward the end on the tofes. So says the Gemara, Yachachi, my lememra. So what's the chiddush of that case? We should have definitely said Yachloku in that case. Said the Gemara, no, Lo Tzricha de Mikrav Lagabe Dechad. Really, it's closer to one person. In other words, it's a pure Yachloku. The fact that your hand is in a, is positioned in another way doesn't matter. Rav Yochanan is of the opinion that even if I'm holding the Tofes and you're holding the Torah, the din is that we have to say Yachloku. Eight lines from the bottom. Amalei Ravacham Yidifti the Ravina, the Rebbe Lazar. Uh, le Ravina, le Rebbe Lazar. According to Rebbe Lazar, who call who holds the Amar Zen Notel Tofes Vizen Notel Tore, Lamale. So uh, says the Gemara. Why do we need this particular case? Why do we need the water? Why do we need the uh, the star at all? We're fighting over the actual star. The star has no value. Right? If we're talking about what the star represents, that's a whole new ballgame. But the star itself has no value. And the Gemara uses a little tongue-in-cheek phrase. Oh, you're going to use this to be like a stopper for a bottle? That was apparently common back in the day. Otherwise, the comment makes no sense. The Gemara says, what are you doing with the paper? I'm not talking about the paper. I'm talking about the financial value that the paper represents. This is the rationale to, uh, to highlight this part of the conversation. How much is a document that says the date and the time that's worth much more? And if there's a part of the star that doesn't have a date in it, how much does that cost? When there's a date on the star, so then I can collect from properties that have a lien on them. That's much more valuable. And, if the, and the rest of the star that doesn't have the date on it, so then you cannot collect from those properties. So therefore, make sure that I get my fair share. Make sure that I get whatever's coming to me. So if there's a part of the star that has a zman on it, then you and I need to split that. It's kind of like the, the weighted average. The part of the star with zman is worth 8 out of 10. The part of the star without zman is worth 2 out of 10. But everybody should get their fair share. So of the 8 out of 10, you and I will split 4 and 4. And of the, the 2 out of 10, you and I will split 1, one each. And that will give us each 5. Even according to Rabbi Yochanan, who said that there is Yachloku, two lines from the bottom, that too is Ledme. We're not talking about the paper. The paper has no value. When you and I are fighting over a star, the paper is worthless. It doesn't mean anything. It's not even worth the paper that it's printed on. The Ilote Mahachi, if this were not to be the case, Shnei Mochsim Batalas Nami, Shnei Mochsim Batalas Hocha Nami Depalge. 
Maybe we should say by the talus, we should also cut the talus in the middle. But how can you say that? Ha'af sedua. You're ruining the talus. You can't cut a talus in half. These are the talisim that I see by the fry of brisim. The, the, shawl, the shawls, you know, the very, very, very thin width talisim that they wear with the very satiny looking strings. Um, there is a halachic minimum to the width of a beget to give it the din of a beget. Not even allowed to make a bracha on those. Afal pi that the Yemenites typically wear talesim like that. They wear them more like a shawl around their neck and then tucked under their arms. So that's that's different. The beget's big enough, but they're wearing it as a shawl. But here, some of these talesim are like eight inches tall. They're what? Scarves. Mamish scarves. I don't. I I think the uh, shear is like three fourths of a. Of an ama. Four corner guns. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that it doesn't unless it's there are larger, there are larger scarves. scarves. Yes, they're called women's scarves. Yeah, they're pashminas. Those things are definitely large enough. They're called pashminas. No, it's like a Persian word or something. I have no idea where it's from. I just know they're. No, he would say that is what it's called. He would just tell you where the word came from in Latin. Yeah, he would be able to pull it. Pashmina. Pashmina, that's pretty common. I think that, I, I think your wife will know what a pashmina is. Yeah, you'll find out. You, you'll find out. Let me know. What? <laughs> oh, man, this is fantastic. Yo, all right, where are we? Oh, here we are. So it says the Gemara in the bottom line, what are you going to do? Cut the talus in half? Ha'af do you'll ruin the talus. Yo, I, you, if my adult talus, if I cut it into two and add strings to each of the new corners, perfectly kosher talus, uh, except that it's tasev alomina asui, you'd have to redo the outside strings because your garment only became a garment. Now, that's a side issue. Uh, okay. Anyways, that's what we would do with the talus is that now, this is just a fascinating way to look back at our at our discussion from the Mishnah and Dav Beis. When we say Shnayim Mochsin Batalis and Yachloku, oh, they mean Yachloku, like take a pair of scissors, Yachloku, and cut it down the middle. Why? Because as long as it's still a minimum shear, they're fit for Ketanim. Now, our Ketanim, there are those who are uh, different Minhagim, but the Yakasha community wears Talesim. Do you guys wear Talesim? When you're, are you guys? Do you guys know? So there are a couple of people who are talesim in the community, a small percentage who are who are yekas or sephardim, spartan for short. Uh, so they were talesim from way before they're married. If you wonder, just what the means what, what we call no, that. no, no, no. It doesn't mean the garment. I'm just giving using, using it as an example. You have an adult shawl. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it just has to be a garment. The talus is a good example because the talus is still usable, but a coat is not usable well, when you cut it in half. We have coats, but if you think about, well, let's say it was a shoe. Let's say it was a shoe. That, that, that there we would not say this. Then we would not say that you cut the shoe in half. Any garment that in a, a, cloak, a, a toga, a toga, or a toga. yeah. yeah. So that that would only be helpful. Yeah. So yeah, that would be the that would be the line in the sand. It's really any garment, but only any garment that if you make it smaller, it's still a garment. You know, so like you cut a sock in half, that's not helpful. So then we would cash out. We would not do Shnaim Ochzim Yachloku, cut it up the middle. I have Amar Rabba, wait one second. What this Chazia Lektanim, then how can you say that? Says the Gemara. If you have a talus that has gold in it, um, what are you going to do? Cut it in half? Off Sadua, says the Gemara. Hello, Kasha, the Chazia Levne Malachim. Uh, the kids aren't going to complain when when they have some gold thread in what they are doing and, and what they are wearing. Rashi says at the top of the page, It's normal for them. They're rich. They're wealthy. It's normal for them to wear uh, garments with gold in them. Okay. Wait one second. You're going to, it's like Brisbane Abbasarim. You're going to take a, a knife and you're just going to cut the animal at the at the midline of the body between the eyes all the way to the end. That can't be. I'm okay if you do that to a kosher animal, provided that you do the shechita first. Let's not be misnabel the animal. But if you do the shechita first and make the animal kosher, that's great. You made the animal kosher. 
but if the animal is a chaz or a camel, something that's not kosher, so then uh, then then cutting the animal in half doesn't help anybody because you can't do anything with the meat. It says the Gemara, In those cases, we're talking about dmei. Hachanami, back to our case too, lidme. So the Gemara wants to have one rule, and therefore the yachloku means we don't actually cut the talus in half. We just find out its modern day cash value, the Kelly Blue Book. We figure out exactly what it costs. That is its today's value. I don't know how we would establish that today. Would we go on Amazon and average out the prices? Would we go on eBay? Would we go on Alibaba? All these well, I, I, it's hard to tell exactly how. I don't know. I'm just sure there is an answer. I just don't know how we would then uh, determine what the current market value is. All right, this is officially the start of Daf Ches, Ran Ches and Medalif, about six, seven lines down. This is a new sugya, and the Gemara here makes a diuk on our Mishnah that is a difficult diuk to make because we don't really know yet where it came from. Uh, for those of you who are planning to make the 930 Mariv, that's very that's very sad because uh, it's not going to happen. Or you'll just have to leave early. Says the Gemara. Amar Rami Barchama Zosomeris. And this is Zosomeris means what we've learned in our Mishnah. So really, you kind of have to look at this as this is, it's Ki'ilu right back on our Mishnah. Okay, what does our Mishnah teach us? That It must be that if I pick something for you, that you are Kona that thing. Why? Because if you're under the assumption that there was no Kenyan, that I, if I pick up an item that you wouldn't be Kona, then then it should be that in our Mishnah, when you and I both picked up the item, it should be It should be that if I pick up a lost item and you pick it up with me, well, the half that I'm holding is only what I'm holding, but your half, it's ke'ilu, it's on the ground, and vice versa. And there's no way that anyone would ever make a Kenyan. If we don't say, says the Gemara, that when I pick up my half, your kona, your half. If we don't say that, then how could we ever have shnai mochs and betalas and yachloku? At the end of the day, you need to own the whole item in order to make a kinyan. You, there's no half season kinyan. You can't pick up an item and have intent to only be kona half the item. Yet our Mishnah seems to say yachloku, which means you do own it. Well, okay, you can't both keep it all, but you both own it. How is it that we're both owners? It must be very interesting diuk from our Mishnah. Says the Gemara, Omar Rava, Rava argues with the Shita of Rami Bar Chama. Nope, you cannot make that inference from our Mishnah. I disagree. Here, why did we, uh, why were both people going to be Kona in the case of Shnaim Oks and Metaz Hainu Taima? Migu de Zacha de Nafshei. Because when I pick it up, in theory, I could have been Zoha the whole thing. Therefore, I'm also Zoha for you. It's a Migu. It's not, uh, I mean, it, it, it works, but it's not because of the. What? The Gemara doesn't say that, but that's uh, certainly one of the underpinnings of, of this kind of principle. That's, uh, that's fairly a fairly typical explanation of what this would be. But because I can be Zoche for you, therefore I can be Zoche for myself as well. And Teda, the Gemara says that this is totally accurate. We're one third of the way down on Chesam and Aleph. Amar Pater. If I say to my messenger, you, hey, go steal something for me, and you listen to me, you shouldn't have. Right? Because Ein Shleach Ledvar Avera. I'm not allowed to tell you to go do an iser. Same exact thing. If my parents, if my father tells me to do something that's against halacha, I should be nice about it, but I should certainly not break halacha. So therefore, when it comes to shlucho, if I tell my shlech the gan of something, so then the din is pater. However, v'shutven shiganvo chayavin. But when it comes, if you and I are partners, and I say, hey, go steal that thing, we're business partners, so then... We're both chayev. My time Lav mishum de amrinon. Migu de zachel nafshe zachanami lechavre. Wouldn't we say that the reason why this is the case, the reason why shutfin are chayavin, is because migu de zachel nafshe zachanami lechavre? Shmami, no. We see Rava has a raya for his shita. So machlokas between Rami bar Chama and the shita of Rava. Rava. Rami bar Chama is of the opinion that hamagbiya mitzia lechaver lo kana chaveru. 
that I'm sorry, Rami Barcham is of the opinion of that when you and I are in the mission of Shnaim Ochsin Batalis, that when I pick up my half and you pick up yours, we're makna the other halves to each other. However, Rava disagrees. And that brings us to a third of the way down. Amar Rava, Hashta da Amr Samrina and Migu, says the Gemara, now that I've proved, says Rava, that we use the principle of Migu de Zachel and Avshe, Zachel and Amr Lechavre, now that that's true, then when we have a case of Cheresh who Pikech, Shigbiya Metzia, let's say that uh, there's a Cheresh, a deaf mute, who has no Das. We know that a Cheresh has no Das. And I'm a Pikech, I'm a regular person, I have Das. Shigbiya Metzia. And they picked up uh, an item. Mitoch shekona cheresh kona pikeach. Rava has this cryptic line that says that just uh, that just like the cheresh is going to be kona, so to the pikeach. But the Gemara says this makes no sense based on the principle of zochin zochin the nafshe zochin amin lechavre. Zochin the chavre mishum the zochin the nafshe zochin amin lechavre. What's the problem? Eight lines before the Y lines. Bishlam al-Cheresh Kona. I could understand why the Cheresh is Kona because I'm opposite the Cheresh and I'm a Pikeach. The 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 come Magbale Ben Das. El Pikeach b'Mai Kona. If I require the other person to enable me to make a Kenyan, the person across from me has no Das. How can we say Zachi in the Nafshe Zachi Nam in the Chavre when one of the people is the Cheresh? The Cheresh the Cheresh cannot be Makna to me. Ella says the Gemara, what did Rava actually mean? Ella Ema, Cheresh Kona, Pikech Lo Kona. Really what it means is that the Cheresh is Kona, because the person standing opposite the Cheresh is a Pikech. And when I pick up my side, Zachir L'Nafshe, Zachir Nam, and the Chavre, you the Cheresh can be Kona. However, you the Cheresh cannot be Makna to me because you have no Das. So says the Gemara, if that's true, then Umay Migu. What is the migu over there? Because we had said migu de zachel and nafshi zachel and amir But if the new version of Rava is that the cheresh is kona and the pikeach is not kona, then what migu are we talking about? Says the Gemara in the name of Rava must be something else. Halfway down, six lines before the wide lines, migu de shnei charosh and ba'alma kanu hai nami kanu. The the migu is that since when it comes to shnei charosh and ba'alma. If two people who were Harashan, two people who were deaf mutes, pick up the item, the Shnai Mochs and Batalis case in our Mishnah, if they pick it up together, we have a Dinder Rabbanon that Shnei Harashan are going to be Kona because we don't want there to be such a, such a Behala. Because if the Shnei Harashan pick it up, we just assume that they were that they were Kona, even though Midor Rai said they're not. So says the Gemara Haimai, what's going on over here? Im Tim Tzalomar Hamag Chavero Kona Chavero if you want to say, like the sheet of Rami Bar Chama, that when I pick up my side of the item, my side of the item, your kona, your side, that's when I have you in mind. However, when I pick up the Mitzia from our Mishnah in Shnai Mochs and Metalis, I'm not thinking about you. I'm thinking about me. I want to be kona this for myself. Ihu lo kani. So if he himself is not going to be kona, la'achrini makni. This makes no sense, Rava. How can you say that the uh, that the pikeach won't be kona when his intent is to be kona for himself, but the cheresh would be kona even though the pikeach wasn't thinking about the cheresh? Ela emad must therefore be says Rava first uh, last of the long lines. Mitoch shelo kana pikeach lo kana cheresh. The halacha is the same across the boards. Is that if our Mishnah had been on Daf Beis of Shnai Mochs and Batalis, and one of them was a Bikech and one of them was a Cheresh, nobody would be Kona. So says the Gemara. Bechitema says the Gemara. If you want to say my Shna, my Shna Mishnei de Alma, what's the difference between uh, a case of a Bikech and a Cheresh versus a case of Shnei Charosh and two Charosh, where we would have said that uh, that there is a special din by the Shnei Russian that there is a Shavua, not, uh, not so much that there's a Shavua, but that they own it. When it comes to Shnei Russian, the Chachamim have instituted a special rule that in order to prevent fighting, the two Russian who picked up an item, it's as though they own it. But Hacha, in our case, Meimar Omar, Pikech Lokani, Ona Akni, but by us, we'd have to argue that if the Pikech is not going to be Kone, then how can anybody else be Kone? 
So um, that's how uh, the Gemara uh, explains this. Very good. So this is the Machlokas that we have over here about Magbiya Metziel Mechavero. Um, what we don't know is where exactly in our Mishnah Rami Barchama got his diuk from. Let's remember from the top of this page on Chesam Adal. Rami Barchama taught us the din of Zosomeris. He said, And the Gemara just went into whether or not that was valid. Rami Barchama and Rava. The problem is, says the Gemara, what's our Mari Makom? Second of the wide lines. Where did Rami Barchama get his din from? That Hamagbiya Metzila Chavero, Kana Chavero. So says the Gemara. If you want to say it's from the word on Dav Beis, uh, by the case of Shnaim Ochzim Betales, Shnaim Ochzim Betales, Hasam Haika Amar Kula, Shlivana Agbe Hasa Kula. In that case, each person is saying it's all mine and I picked up the whole thing. Behai Amar, and the other person, the plaintiff or the defendant, whoever the other person is, he says, Kula Shli, Vana Agbe Hasa Kula. So says the Gemara, that can't be the case that we learn from the Resha. We can't learn from the Resha this din of Rami Barchama of Hamagbiya Metzila Chavero Kana Chavero because that doesn't make sense. Ella says the Gemara five lines into the wide lines. Ella, Me'adikatani, it's from the later part of the Mishnah. What did our Mishnah say? Ze'omer Kula Shali, Ze'omer Kula Shali. So says the Gemara, Hasu Lamali, why do I need the duplicative language? It must be that from there, Elami Mishnah Yisera, Shmami Noah, Magbiya Metzila Chavero Kana Chavero. Perhaps from the extra language in the Mishnah, where it says ze omer kula shali ve ze omer kula shali, perhaps we can infer from there this din of our Mishnah that Rami Barham is trying to teach that a magbiya mitzin lechavero kana chavero. So says the Gemara. Why would I need that? Uh, and the Gemara therefore says, ha, ha, you can't even say that. We then wanted to say that we learned it from the extra phrase, but no, we can't say that because vahu kimna reisha b'mitziv seifa b'meka chumemkar. We had already said early on in this mesechta. We had said a little bit earlier, and on the side here, it comments that it's on Dav Beis, very early on, bottom of that page, that the Resha, the first part, the first clause that I claimed in the case of Shnaim Ochsim when I said Zomer Kula Shali. So that, says the Gemara, was talking about a Metzi, about a lost item. And Viseifa, the second time it said it was talking about Bemekach Memkar. So that also doesn't function as a very good answer. So what then, again, we've just rejected our source. We don't have a part of our Mishnah that taught us the din of Rami Bar Chama that I'm like, Mitzila, chaver, kona, chaver. So the Gemara says, Elami Seifa, it must be that it's learned out from the Seifa. Ze Omer Kula Shali, Ze Omer Chetya Shali. Maybe we can learn from that case because Asu Lamali, I don't need that case either. I can always find out, you know, whatever the ratios of ownership are. That's fine. I can do that. So therefore, maybe the clause of Ze'omer Kula Shali Ze'omer Chetzya Shali is sufficient for me to learn out this principle of Hamotzi Mechavero, Hamagbiya Metzia Lechavero, Kana Chavero. So then the Gemara says, Umimai de Bimetzia, Mehecha Teisia, sorry, I think I skipped a line, Hasu Lamali, Elami Mishnah Yisera, Shmamina, Magbiya Metzia Lechavero, Kana Chavero. We learn from the extra clause of Kula Shali and Chetzya Shali, this idea of Magbiya Metzia Lechavero. How do you know that this case is talking about a metzia? How do you know? There was two parts of the Mishnah. How do we know which one's which? Says the Gemara, and if you want to say, if you want to say that there's no reason to have ever even thought about the case of Mekach Memkar, that's not true, because really, Itzrich, we would need that case, because Salka Daita Chaminai might have thought, I might have thought that if we would have thought we were talking about Mekach Memkar, then when a person says Chetz Yashali, it should be Begeder Kemeshi Veda, and then the person should be Potter. Kamash Malan, Daha I Arume Kama Arim, that a person who's doing this, the Chetz Yashali, he's actually trying to be a little bit sneaky. Savar, what was his concern and how was he sneaky? His concern was that Iamina Kula Shali, Va'ina Ishtabue. If I would have said that it's all mine, that would bring about a Shvua. Therefore, I'm going to say the following. It must therefore be that since that can't be the source of our Mishnah, since that part of our Mishnah, I should say, cannot be a source for the din of Rami Bar Chama, of since that's true, it must be that it's coming from another part of the Mishnah. 
And that is like this. Six lines from the bottom. Why do I need that case? I could have learned out the case of Rochven from the Resha. It must be me. Maybe we learn it from there. Maybe we learn this idea of Hamot Amagbia Mitzil Chavero Kana Chavero from the extra case in our Mishnah. Says the Gemara, no. The Dilma Hakamash Malanda Rochev Nami Kani. Maybe this comes to teach us that riding an animal is no different than making a kinyan on an animal. They're one and the same. So therefore, that also can't be a raya. So what then is the part of our Mishnah that Rami Bar Chama learned from? Says the Gemara, El Seifa. We learned it from the last case of our Mishnah. And this was a case that even when we read it, and the Mishnah in Dab Bez was very cryptic, and Rashi gave us a little bit of a, a, little bit of a hint to Dab Ches. What did it say? When there are when there is an admittance or there are witnesses, below What is that case talking about in the Seifa? So according to this approach, Kaftor Baferach, we now understand the Mari Makom of Rami Barchama. Rami Barchama taught us a din of Zoso Meris Hamagbiyam Tzil Chavero Kon Chavero. Where do we learn this from? We learn it from the very final clause of our Mishnah um, in regards to uh, in regards to Bizman Shein Modin Oshe Shlem Eden, that last case that even when we learned the Mishnah was unclear that you're Cholkin below Shavua. So says the Gemara Bimai, what's the case? Even Mekach Memkar Tzricha Lameimar. If it's talking about Mekach Memkar, that's Pashat as to what we would do. If somebody says, we're back back and forth in a transaction, and I'm Mode or there are Edim, then I can be Cholik below Shavua. Ella, it must be lab that we're talking about b'metzia. B'shma mino mag b'metzia lechavero. Kon lechavero, we have our mari makom. B'rava amar lach, no. Migu de zache lenafshe, zache nami lechavre. He disagrees. And he says that really the halachic reason as to how we know that ha-mag b'metzia lechavero, kon lechavero, is based on the principle of migu de zache lenafshe, zache nami lechavre. Machloke samurayim. That brings us to the bottom of ches samad aleph. We still have a little bit of a ways to go. We're supposed to go to the bottom of the page. Um, I don't think we have much of a choice because we're a little bit behind, so we're just going to push through. You guys... Yeah, yeah, we'll catch up then. We'll catch up. Or before Kufiya test, one of the two. No, thank you. <laughs> I have a bris tomorrow. I don't... Uh, I, w- I wouldn't be available. It's nothing to do with my wife. It has to do with my time. I know that's fine. I have some babysitters at home. That's easy. All right, let's continue. Says the Gemara at the bottom of Chesam and Aleph, Hayu Shnaim Rochman, two people um, were Rochev ala Chamor. So we had said in our Mishnah that that seemed to be similar to a case of Shnaim Ochsim. Amar of Yosef, Amar Li Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yosef said, I heard in the name of Rabbi Yehuda, turning to the top of Chesam and Beis, Shamis Mine de Mar Shmuel Tarti. I heard two things from Rav Shmuel in regards to the following two din Rachuv and Umanhig, a person riding an animal and a person pulling the reins of an animal. It says the Gemara Chad Kani Vichad Lo Kani Vlayadana Haiminai. One of them is a Kenyan, either sitting on the animal is a Kenyan, or pulling the string, the reins of an animal is a Kenyan. Which one is it? Says the Gemara Echidami, what's the case? Chesam at base, three lines down. Ilim Rachel Vichude, Manig Vichude. If you're talking about, um, you know, individual scenarios, one where a person is rachov, one where a person is manig, no one in their right mind would ever say that pulling an animal's leash is not a kinyan when the animal is a metziah. That's like the most classical case of Mashiach ever. So Pasha that that's true. The only way we can have a, a possibility of saying that there's no kinyan is rachov with the Between the two, it would only be Rachel. What type of Kenyan is sitting on an animal? That's not a Kenyan. I mean, you want to tell me you made the animal move? Okay, then say that. But the fact that uh, he's Rochev is Lav Dafka Kenyan. So therefore, that can't be what was going on with Rachel Bumanhi, where one was Kona and one was not. It must be, says the Gemara, Rachel Bimako Manhi Iboyele. My. We're talking about a case where there's a person who is rachuv, he's riding on the animal, and there's someone else who at the same time with the same animal is manhig. Do we say six lines down, chesam and beis rachuv adiv, that riding the animal is better, tafis bay, because he's literally gripped onto the animal? Odilma manhig adiv, de azla machmaseh. 
Or do we say no, that when it comes to guiding an animal, to leading an animal, that's better because the animal's moving based on myself. I'm pulling it, it's moving. So Amar Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef says, Amar Li Rav Yehuda, Nech Zayanan. Rav Yosef says in the name of Rav Yehuda, let's see. What does this mean? It's not. We have a mission on Maseches Kiloim. Hamanhig, if I am uh, pulling the rope of two animals, and these two animals together are kilaim, so then sofig is harboim. The halacha is that if I if I pull a plow of two animals, animals that are kilaim to one another, that means I'm sofig is harboim, that I then get lashes. And as well, the Hayoshev Bikaron, if a person is being pulled by animals who are kiloim, so then as there as well, Sofeg is Harboim, Rav Meir Potter as Hayoshev Bikaron, Rav Meir says that you're Potter if you're sitting in the Karon. So there we see a distinction between Rachav Umanig, that according to Rav Meir, the person who's Rochev inside the Karon is Potter, but the person who is uh, the other person who's leading is going to be uh, Sofeg is Harboim. Says the Gemara, "Me the Apech Shmuel Vitani and Shmuel actually reversed this, and he taught the Chacham and Potron as Hayoshe Bekaron Shma Mina Rachuv Lechude Lo Kani." It seems to be from there that if you rewire the Chacham in this way, that Rachuv by itself is not going to make a Kenyan. That Rachuv Lechude Lo Kani. The Kol Shekain Rachuv B'Makom Manhig. This is certainly true in a case of Rachuv B'Makom Manhig. If you're going to say that Rachov is not Kone by itself, it's most definitely not going to be a Kone when it's up against Manhig, where, where I'm doing a classical Mashiach. Says the Gemara, Amar Le'a Abayi Le'a... What? No. Uh, Amar Le'a Abayi Le'a Rav Yosef. Abayi says to Rav Yosef, Hazimnin, Sagi, and Amrislan, Nech Ze'anan, V'lo Amrislan, Mishmed, Rav Yehuda. This time you said, Nech Ze'anan, you said, we will see. But you didn't say it in the name of Rabbi Yehuda. That's not that, that's just not the right way to say it. You should quote it in the name of the right person. Amarle Avra. In truth, this really is also Rabbi Yehuda. Uh I actually recall Nami de Amri Lay that I asked the following question to him. He says to the Gemara, how do you explain? He said to his uh, to Rabbi Yehuda, how do you explain the Rachov Miyoshe? What what's going on there? It says the Gemara, Yoshev lo tafis b'moseira. When a person is sitting down on top of an animal, he's not holding the reins. But Rachuv is tafis b'moseira. When you're just sitting on the animal, let's say side saddle, I don't know exactly how you're sitting, but yeshiva alone is lab dafka that you're holding the reins. But when you're riding the animal, I went this past summer, we, I went horseback riding with some of my kids. There, you're, you're holding on to the reins and for your dear life all at the same time. You're not letting go. Those are different cases. Holding on to the reins when you're sitting on the animal is not a Kenyan. So that's very interesting because we would have thought it would have been similar to Manhig and it's not similar to Manhig. Uh, Manhig is better than Roche, even Yoshe versus Roche. Anika de Amre, another version of the same. Bryce says we head toward the bottom of the page. How do you distinguish between riding an animal and sitting on an animal? So Yoshev lo tafis b'mosera, rachiv tafis b'mosera. I would have said the same exact thing. I would have said that when you're sitting on an animal, you're holding on to the reins. When you're riding an animal, you're not holding on to the reins, uh, or the opposite. Yeah, Yoshev lo tafis and rachiv is tafis. Amar lei hachi tana idi. This is what idi the tana taught us. Mosira lo kani. That holding on to the reins when you're sitting on it is not helpful. Itmar Nami, the Amoraim also spoke about this. That uh, if you and I are making a transaction and you hand me the reins, that is enough of a Kenyan. But in the following cases, it's not enough. Three fourths of the way down, 10 lines from the bottom, Chesimid Bey is going toward the second to last line. Bimitsia, if I find a lost item, Uvenichse Hager, or if I find the properties of a ger, a ger, of course, is someone who has no Yorshim, then Lokani. Then the exchange of a Mosera is not going to be Kona. Lemaisa summarizing briefly this section, it seems to be the case that uh, when we have a case scenario of Manhig, that's definitely Kona. Rachov seems to be somewhat of a discussion, and there might even be a difference between Yoshev and Rochev, but Lemaisa, Mosera, the passing of the reins alone is not considered a Kenyan. 
My lashon Moseira. Why are we calling rains Moseira? The Gemara says, "Avar Amar Rava, Idi Azberali, Idi the Tana explained. Well, Idi must be an Amora in this case, but Idi explained to me, Ki Adama Moser Davar Lechavera, meaning the etymology of the word Moseira is from the word Moser. I'm handing over the animal to you." So says the Gemara, wait one second. I understand if you hand me the reins in order to make a Kenyan, I could understand why that would function as a Kenyan. But when it comes to a lost item, which was the subject of our Mishnah, who's giving who what on the reins? Nobody owned it before. The Nechzei Hageri has no relatives, and the Metziah, it's a lost item. So therefore... It must be that there's another way to make a Kenyan other than just the Moseira. So therefore, that would be Manhig. The Gemara asks, Meisve, hold on one second. Money. Who does that Mishnah, our Mishnah, and Dav Beis go like? Ilema Reb Meir. If you want to say that our Mishnah is like Reb Meir, Hashta Yoshev Kani Rachov Mibaya. According to Reb Meir, he says that Yoshev is Kani. So Pasha that Rachov is going to be, uh, is also going to be Kone. Elalab, it must be that our Mishnah is the Rabbanon. And what do the Rabbanon say? Vishmamina Rachuv Kani. It must be that therefore, therefore they hold that the sitting on the animal is going to be a Kenyan in and of itself. This is talking about someone who's guiding with his feet, namely he's walking. Yachi Hainu Manig. What's the difference between Manig Baraglav and Manig? Says the Gemara Trey Gavne Manig. There's two different kinds of, of Manig. There's Manig uh, holding and there's Manig standing. If you might have thought Rahu was better, I might have thought that uh, the Rahu would have been better because you're being manhig, you're riding the animal, and you're sitting on the animal at the same time. Kamash Malan, that that's not true, that manhig is still better. We're going to stop right here at the Tashma, at the bottom of Dav Chesim at Beis. Um, if I'm able, I'm going to do one Amud tomorrow recorded and posted. No. If I'm not able, then I won't because we still have a lot to catch up on. Wishing you all a beautiful night.